information they are receiving. It also debilitates, Jen, our workforce. Mm -hmm. These are individuals who are putting their lives on the line to search and rescue for victims of Hurricane Helene, a hurricane of historic magnitude. It is very sad. It's very sad. Very it sounds damaging. Like you're saying that people feel like government can't help them, so they're not seeking the information that they are entitled to, which is very alarming. I wanted to ask you about, I mean, one of the themes we've also seen with how Trump spreads misinformation is that it's the targeting of migrants often um, and the migrant community. We saw that in Springfield. We've seen that a bit around the hurricane. Uh, you're a child of immigrants yourself, um, but also as, a, as the secretary of the Home, uh, Department of Homeland Security, you, you oversee and you, you watch this issue closely. I want to play something he said this morning um, and get your thoughts on it. She has no clue. How about allowing people to come to an open border, 13,000 of which were murderers, many of them murdered far more than one person, and they're now happily living in the United States. You know, now a murderer, I believe this, it's in their genes, and we got a lot of bad genes in our country right now. I mean, that's obviously... Uh, disgusting what he just said and I want to put the politics aside here um, and ask you kind of on a personal level but also if I may as the Secretary of Homeland Security how concerned are you with the repetition of that rhetoric and how migrant communities are being targeted by his supporters I think um, uh, Jen you you put it powerfully just a few minutes ago and quite poignantly we have parents who are scared to send their children to school because of this demonization, because of the false information, the targeting of migrants. In our darkest chapters of world history, we've seen this de demonization victimize millions of people. You speak of my, you reference my personal story. Um, six million Jews were killed in World War II. My mother lost a tremendous amount of family precisely because of this type of rhetoric and the violence that it breeds. Now, most of the former president's thoughts on undocumented immigrants are well known, including that many are rapists, killers, and the like. Today, though, that kind of thinking crossed streams, as it were, with another of his well-known beliefs, namely in genetics and breeding. Here's what he told Hugh Hewitt today in the middle of talking about murderous migrants. You know, now a murderer, I believe this, it's in their genes. And we got a lot of bad genes in our country right now. He also said falsely that Vice President Harris was, quote, allowing people to come through an open border, 13,000 of which were murderers. That number, in fact, comes from figures which are not specifically about people who entered the country during the Biden-Harris administration. They cover any administration going back decades. In addition, that number he includes cites people who are in jail or prison for their crimes currently or who have served uh, their times uh, for crimes. Back to genetics, though, it is, as we said, something of a pet subject of his. In this case, in 2020, invoking not murderous bad genes, but Minnesota nice ones. We have good genes. A lot of it's about the genes, isn't it? Don't you believe? The racehorse theory, you think we're so different? You have good genes in Minnesota. Joining us now is Republican strategist and Harris supporter Anna Navarro, also former Biden White House Communications Director Kate Bedingfield, and Trump 2020 campaign senior official Aaron uh, Perini. Um, I mean, Anna, it's obviously, you know, this is what he's done for years. Uh, you know, talking about poisoning the blood and genetics, I mean, it's, th these are not good, uh, these are echoes of not good historical facts. Yeah, in things. 2016, it was Mexicans are criminals and rapists and bad hombres. In 2024, it's bad genes. Look, he's, you know, it's the kind of thing he's been saying forever, right? He's been peddling, otherizing other people. We have seen that uh, he blames everything on migrants and immigrants. He makes up stories about Haitians. And you can say to yourself, this is just rhetoric. This is just Trump and the stupid stuff he says continuously. You know, people who support him say, oh, you know, don't take him uh, literally. Don't take him seriously. Here's the problem. Because of the things he says, people get triggered. Because of the things he says, he inspires people like the mass shooter that drove miles and miles and miles to an El Paso Walmart and killed 23 people because he was hunting down Latinos. Because of the things he said, kids in school, Latino kids in school, get called racial slurs and have that trauma forever. So his words matter. His words matter, and this is just who he is. Aaron, I mean, is the, the sort of 
language, bad genes, poisoning the blood. Is that stuff moderate swing voters want to hear in the waning days of a general election? It's not the most strategic targeted message, message towards swing voters going into a general election. The voters are being very clear about what they care about right now. It's about the economy and about immigration. It's about their families and their communities. And the way that politicians of every stripe and color need to be talking to them is on a humanizing level. When they're talking about the economy, it's about affordability. It's about groceries. When they're talking about immigration, they're talking about their communities and the safety and sovereignty of this nation. Make it something people can relate to and not something you need to fear monger on. We're in the closing days of this election and every inch matters. We're seeing young Latino voters in a USA Today poll move more toward young male voters, more toward Donald Trump. You're going to see these demographics continue to break in these late days. The message that is being delivered by both candidates needs to be strategic and smart to make sure that they're getting this done. And right now that is not helping Donald Trump. Kate, I mean, they continue, if Trump continues to do this, the campaign continues to do this. So, I mean, they must have some belief that this works for them. Uh, I mean, does it appeal to some sort of feral brain part of, you know, human beings? Uh, you know, look, I, I'm, I would be afraid to even try to get inside the mind of Donald Trump and who he thinks this is appealing to. But Look, does it appeal to moderate voters, to swing voters, to the voters that he needs to win over in the final month of this election? No. I mean, we know that immigration is an issue that does work generally in his favor. But what people don't like is exactly this kind of language. They don't like the hateful rhetoric. They don't like the divisive language. Uh, and so talking in this way, which, you know, I think Anna is absolutely right, does uh, you know, it, it it causes people to behave in really problematic ways. It also just coarsens our politics. It makes it harder and harder to actually come to, to solutions, which I think may be exactly what Donald Trump's trying to do here in some ways. I mean, he is the one who took the bipartisan immigration bill off the table because he wanted to keep the issue to campaign on it. He's not looking for solutions. So, you know, if he thinks, you know, this is connecting with some piece of his base, Maybe it is. I'm certainly not the, the person who could uh, speak to what's working with the MAGA base. But for in a general election, when you are trying to reach these voters who are ultimately going to determine the outcome of this election, uh, no, this is not a winning strategy. And it's dangerous. It Adversaries love this. This is a field day for Russia and China, who are going to then amplify on social media ahead of the election to just stoke fear and tear us apart. This is, listen, everything becomes politicized a month out from an election, but this is a step further that I've never really seen something like this when you're dealing with multiple horrible national dis natural disasters at the same time. And it just shows Donald Trump is willing to go solo. Yeah, I mean, uh, Doug, you're from North Carolina. A lot of your family is still there. I'm wondering what you're hearing from people uh, on the ground about, I mean, are people hearing these lies? Is it impacting things at all? They, they sure are. And Anderson, I got a call on Thursday from Congresswoman Virginia Fox, who represents one of the districts most affected uh, by the hurricane, who made it very clear to me that FEMA assured her and other North Carolina members on a call that they have more than enough funds 
uh, for Helene, that they're good there. And look, you know, clearly some of the media attention wasn't where it should have been last weekend. And certainly, you know, we didn't know the direction of the storm. So some of the resources weren't on the ground there. But when you're spreading disinformation, it means all sorts of agencies. It's, it's not just FEMA, right? It's state agencies. It's the Small Business Administration. It's not just Joe Biden or Donald Trump in this matter. Uh, it, it, it's a comprehensive federal and state and state's effort. Uh, what they have to do is then take their eye off the ball to tell people uh, these things are false and then these things are true. This is the news you can rely on and this is what you can't. It takes their eye off the ball and makes it that much harder. And there's also, you know, brass politics in this, as, as Alyssa mentioned, but it's also stupid politics. The reality is the area of North Carolina that was hit is overwhelmingly Republican. Donald Trump of the uh, of the 25 counties that are under emergency declaration, Donald Trump won all of them but two. It continues to shock people, guys. It's it's horrifying stuff. And this is how, you know, Trump events end in violence. We've talked about this, right? Like why why do why was it that 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 millions of Democrats and progressives and moderates and even anti-Trump Republicans despise Trump, rightfully think he's a danger to democracy. But why was it that two, a, a Vivek Ramaswamy supporter and a registered Republican were the ones to actually try and take Trump's life? Why? Why wasn't any, why wasn't it a, 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 a leftist, a, a Democrat, a Pelosi supporter, a Kamala supporter, a Biden supporter? Why? And we know why. It's because despite the fact that we hate him and many of us think he rightfully belongs in prison, we're not just saying that because we disagree with him. It's because he's literally a convicted felon and there's more felonies to come, more trials to come, right? When we're like, we want this man out of power, we mean defeated at the ballot box and yes, put in prison for the crimes he's been convicted of by regular working and middle-class members of a jury of his peers in his hometown. But we're not the ones calling for out-and-out -out dehumanization. You people got to remember this. Some There are some snobby liberals, and right in the comments, you'll know people like this, who mock everybody from the South and mock them all for being poor and like they, they love their cousins and they're from the trailer park and all of that. I grew up in a trailer park. We have them in Canada. I literally grew up in a trailer park. I grew up with not a lot of money. I was a, in a lot of ways a lot more like the people that snooty liberals make fun of. And yet, what do most progressives want for the MAGA base? We want them to have better schools, better hospitals, uh, better access to uh, welfare and social services and equal opportunity or at least much more equal opportunity for their children as the children of more privileged people. If we win, especially left wing, like leave out the corporate Democrats for a second. If the Bernie Sanders wing of the Democratic Party wins, the biggest beneficiaries are going to be some of the Trump supporters in red states. If they win, people on our side die. Not people that look like me, right? Not people who are men who look like me, but lots of people. Because look at how he talks. Kamala's like, let's tax the rich some more. Trump's like, these people have bad genes and are racially inferior to me, the white savior of our country. This is why every Trump rally is a violent one. I don't care if physical violence doesn't happen at them. Every Trump rally is a violent rally. 